Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager, here once again with another video on just a bunch of DCU stuff that came out, what, over the past couple of days? I think, yeah, so over the past weekend that just went by, we had New York Comic Con. Uh, you know, I don't know how long, what day it started, but it, I think it ended Sunday, I'm not too sure. But historically, or classically, or just from what we've known, New York Comic Con isn't really that much of a draw when it comes to the movie or TV side of things, at least in regards to doing anything big so really like nothing on the movie or tv side of things usually it's mainly for i know shocker the comics and sometimes video games and that is just due to the timing of it being held you know you know middle to late october it's usually too late for tv shows to be involved because a lot of them usually would premiere in late september early october and it's too close to something like ccxp where movies will also be showcased but then again also a lot of the big movies of the year already come out because a lot of the times, big movies wouldn't come out around Christmas. It would be more holiday movies and stuff like that. The only things you would sometimes get is that like a show might go there that's already premiered to maybe show like a mid-season trailer or this is coming up next or just to be involved. Maybe if they didn't go to San Diego Comic-Con earlier in the year. But this year, we did have James Gunn attend with the cast and crew of Creature Commandos because that is coming out at a weird time for a TV show, at least classically, that being early December. So at this panel, they you know, of course, talked about Creature Commandos and showed a new trailer, which was released online. I won't really talk about it too much, but it looks fine. I'll, I'll be lying if I said I was like heavily anticipating the release, but when it comes out, I'll be sure to watch it. I am surprised that the first project in this DCU reboot is something not suitable for kids. Like I thought like, okay, it'd be very James Gunn-esque, but I didn't think it'd be overly gory, if that makes sense. Um, and that's just because, you know, kids at the end of the day are going to be your main audience. But then again, it is an animated TV show, so it's already very niche. So I guess like it's not too much of a risk. I guess it would be a different thing if it was a live action film like Superman. But at this panel, Gunn also talked about the upcoming DCU projects outside of Creature Commandos, answering sort of, I guess, frequently asked questions, but also questions that were like very safe and weren't going to lean into spoilers and stuff like that. It was very uniform, very corporate, if you want to put it in regards to the questions that were given. And they worked well in regards to promoting what's coming without necessarily diving too much into what is coming at the same time. And that's just for most of the projects in development that are coming out over the next two years or so, whether they have already started filming or been filmed or are about to start filming in the beginning of next year. But we're going to go through all the major stuff that was talked about. Like it, there was a lot more that was talked about, but it was very like, whatever, like you wouldn't like honestly really care less some, some, uh, about some of the stuff that was talked about. So we'll talk, we'll mention and discuss the stuff that was actually of note. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below your various thoughts on this stuff. What are you most excited for in regards to these upcoming DCU projects? Let me know. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video and want to show your support, drop a like. It takes two seconds. And just one quick thing to mention, because it's not in my notes, but I just remember it on the top of my head. I think this might be the first official like thing like that's like branded. Like this was a you know DC Studios Creature Commandos panel and stuff where they actually used DCU. It's in the trailer for Creature Commandos as well. They said like the new DCU. So we don't know if it's officially called the DCU. Um, we don't know. Because obviously, like, people are going to go, well, hold on, that's copying the M for you. But it's just an abbreviation, you know. Actually, well, it's not because it's it should be DCCU. Then again, it's just DC Universe. But if it's a cinematic universe, then it's DCCU. I don't know, you have to make up your mind in regards to that, I guess. But they use DCU, like, officially in promotional stuff for Creature Commanders at the very least. But the first thing of note that was talked about is that specific events from the DCEU, so the past universe with, like, you know, the Snyderverse and stuff like that, will be canon to the DCU. Now, you know, emphasis on specific, but only when they are mentioned in new DCU projects. So if they're not mentioned, they're not canon. That's essentially the way that they put it. This is what Gunn had to say. There are references to things that happened in the past, and those references then become canon in the DCU because we mention them. One example given of what is still canon from the DCU is that Rick Flagg Jr. is still dead. Gunn says Creature Commandos explicitly mentions that Rick Flagg Sr.'s son is dead and this was something that was theorized oh they're gonna they can change and bring him back to life and stuff like that and this is something that we could i think we're obviously going to see in creature commandos and peacemaker season two for obvious reasons but they could even pull this this wild card out in like four or five years if there's something from the dceu we're like oh, hold on that event would work here or something and they can do it if they want to or there was like a minor character that appeared in a dcu a dceu project that they want to bring back I don't know if that would happen, but for example, like there's someone like Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn who was in multiple different things 
but a lot of the, like, she's only in one James Gunn project, which is the Suicide Squad. She was in, what, two other ones? Like, the first Suicide Squad, and then, of course, Birds of Prey. So there could be something that they want to reference there, and then all of a sudden that becomes canon, but that might not be for another five years from now. So I don't know if that's going to be the case. I think a lot of the stuff that they're going to make canon or they want to make canon will be heavily addressed in the opening handful of projects, but it it opens the door, like the doors, all the doors left open a crack in regards to like, you know, we could be five, six years down the track in this new universe. And then they decide to draw back from something from the DCEU because it connects to one of the characters, whether it's new or that they want to bring in from the past or something like that. But this is not too surprising, like this whole thing. I mean, I think anyone with half a brain knew that James Gunn was going to be very like, you know, he was going to cherry pick what he wanted and, and, and pretty much all of it was going to be stuff that he was he did, which was the Suicide Squad or Peacemaker, which overall I'm fine with. I know people are going to say there's hypocrisy and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, he's the guy in charge. You know, if it was like very like, if there was like favoritism or something in regards to like, he wasn't the guy in charge. And like, let's say Peter Safran was the one in charge and James Gunn wasn't, didn't have any real like hierarch hierarchical um, control or anything like that. And then things went his way, you'd be like, hold on, there's a bit of bias towards James Gunn. But he's the guy doing it. He's the creative guy. You know, Peter Safran's the business guy, the more produce like business producer type. James Gunn's the creative producer type in the, in that in that partnership leading DC Studios. So shouldn't be too surprised. And I'm fine with that because he's in that role. The next thing that was said is that there is no overall aesthetic for the DCU. Instead, each project will be artistically distinct. Uh, this is the quote, every single project that comes out of DC Studios is going to be its own thing. It's a connected universe, but we're not imposing any overall aesthetic. Um, I don't think this is too much different from the DCEU. I thought the DCEU, a lot of the projects were very distinct in regards to the different styles. I mean, I, I mentioned something like Birds of Prey before. It's different than Shazam, you know, for example. And then um, Aquaman is different than wonder woman or whatever it is you know i think they were already distinct i think maybe this is more in reference to the mcu where a lot of that stuff um feels like it's like from the same mold in regards to like the how it's shot like the, you know stylistically if that makes sense so i think that's probably what the reference is to i don't think there's because i already felt like the dceu was that at least to me, maybe you might disagree. Next up, apparently the Superman trailer will arrive relatively soon with Gunn saying it won't be too long, but it won't be too soon. So we don't know if that means CCXP. I feel like CCXP is the place where they would drop something. It could be the opening poster or like the, the, the teaser poster for the film because we still don't have a poster. We have that thing with Superman and Crypto on the moon and they might use that as a poster, but I think it's a, to be honest, I think it's a bit of a weak poster in regards to at least catching people's attention. Um, so they might do that at CCXP because it is important to remember in February, February, is it late February or early March? Whenever it is, we have the Super Bowl. So th there will 120,000% be a Superman trailer at the Super Bowl. It just fits. Super Bowl, Superman, it's 100% going to be there. I think it would be a bit silly to say, oh, I don't think they're going to do that. They're just going to do it. You know, it, it'd be silly not to. But I just wonder if we have to wait till the Super Bowl. Because um, Superman is coming out around the same time as The Flash did um, last year. So Flash last year is coming around around the same date that Superman's coming out next year. And The Flash's first trailer came out, I think, at the Super Bowl from memory. So they might follow that marketing technique. But then again, The Flash's marketing technique or marketing campaign was heavily criticized because they front loaded it. And then once we actually got to the movie, it being marketed the hell out of. They did all the marketing way too early. I remember it was on like the NBA finals. NBA finals finished like a month before the Flash movie came out. It was done way too soon. It wasn't even the finals. I think it was the playoffs. Like they're just the basic playoffs done way too early. So they don't want to make that same mistake with Superman, you know, just because there's a, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of baggage around it. It needs to do well. But speaking of Superman, Crypto apparently plays an amazing role in Superman with Gunn saying he's an incredible part of the story. He came into the screenplay and kind of changed everything up. Now, in regards to how that happens, I'm not, or like the actual effect of that, I'm not too sure. I think Crypto, to be completely honest, is going to be used as a tool, not a tool, if that makes sense, but it's not going to surprise me if Crypto is how Supergirl folds into this. Like Crypto came to Earth with Supergirl and that's why crypto maybe he's just like sort of like out of nowhere because i think crypto is going to be like not have been with superman you know throughout his life he's just going to show up i think he probably comes via kara's pod or however she gets to earth i think that's how it's going to happen and then probably you meet supergirl when she's trying to find crypto 
I don't know if that's me spoiling the movie, but that's my prediction. That's how I, I think connecting the pieces makes sense. Um, but we also don't know how much of the movie crypto's in. Like James Gunn said, he's an incredible part of the story, but he could be incredible for five minutes and then that's his part of the movie. We don't know. Another thing with Superman, Alan Tudyk has a secret role in Superman. James Gunn teased this was said. Uh, I think someone might've got an exclusive for it. So I guess this is Gunn confirming it, but uh, Alan Tudyk already plays Dr. Phosphorus in Creature Commandos, but his role in Superman will be a separate character. I don't know if it's going to be anything like too grand of note. If we could, I'm assuming it's just a cameo. I don't think, it, but then again, it might be like some sort of like minor role and it's a bit more than a cameo, but I'd expect it's maybe like one or two scenes, but I don't know. I know people like have issues with like the multiple things, but Dr. Phosphorus, Alan, Alan Tudyk's not going to play that character in live action. It's obviously going to be CGI and even the human form, if you want to put it before he gets in the incident that we see in the Creature Commandos trailer, it's animated. It's not him playing it. So I don't have too many issues with this though. I know a lot of people are, not too happy about it, but it is what it is, I guess. But speaking of Supergirl, we mentioned her before. Supergirl will start filming in January 2025 in the UK, so around the same time as Lanterns. James Gunn has seen a screen test for Ruthia, I think it's how you pronounce it, which is like the little girl character that Supergirl is with, and they try to avenge her father's death. Spoiler, I guess. Um, but yeah, they've done a screen test for her and Supergirl, and the actress that uh, you know the actress that did the test did it alongside Millie Alcock, who of course is playing Supergirl. I do wonder like how they're going to handle some of the promotional campaigns for these different projects once they get into the swing of things. Because I think that was an issue that the DCU faced was like the consistency of it. Um, and I think Marvel's facing that now. It's like, how do you balance these different projects? Which one do you give more emphasis and stuff like that? So I'm intrigued to see how they do it. Um, obviously, you probably learn as you go and there would be growing pains and lessons you learn and stuff like that. Um, but that's an interesting thing to keep an eye on, I guess. And the last thing to mention is something about Lantons. So Lantons is apparently very grounded. Gunn said it's a very grounded and real series, which is strange to say, which is strange to say for a Green Lantern show, but it's going to be something, uh, it's, but it's going to be something nobody's ever seen before. Look, Lantons was my most anticipated project for this upcoming DCU. I don't know if it was necessarily, I'd probably say by far, at least like by a decent margin. I don't like the idea of it being like this very grounded and real series. Like I think that goes away from what the Green Lantern core should be. Like it is space opera, very cosmic and stuff like that. And I'm hoping that's in the show when it's maybe they're trying to like, like mislead people in like a surprising way, not, not in like a, oh, screw you type of way, but in like a, oh, you don't necessarily know what's going to be coming. So I hope it's not too grounded. Not in necessarily if that means it's grounded in regards to it's realistic because I'm like, dude, this is space cops with glowing rings that create stuff. Like saying it's realistic and that's the only thing there is incredibly stupid. But I'm hoping it's maybe just like emotionally grounded because that's where sometimes when people say grounded, they mean it's more like it's real human feelings. It's realistic life choices, though it's in this fantastical world. So I'm hoping that's what he means. I think it would be because if you look at like Gunn's previous projects, um, whether it's in, you know, the DC stuff or even the MCU stuff, uh, it sort of leans more into that, you know? So I'm hoping that's what he means. Yeah, I'd assume it is, but you never know because also he's not the main nut guy doing it. He's obviously involved in the creative process, but at the end of the day, it's going to be what Chris Mundy, I think his name is, and Damon Lindelof and Tom King. It's going to be up to like what they want to do with it. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But overall, as you can sort of get from that, it's not like there was a lot said here. I know people try to make a big deal of it at New York Comic Con uh, over the, or online over the weekend, but a lot of the stuff we already knew was more James Gunn either addressing it or further elaborating on it and stuff like that. So look, I don't know if we're going to get anything major at CCXP, but we know they're going to be there. Like I think David Corrin's what already teased, like, yeah, they're going to be there. So it's, I guess whether they talk about stuff there or just show stuff is the big question. But I think, we, honestly, you're probably going to have to be waiting until... Well, just until the movie comes out, because the movie's coming out before Comic-Con next year, so it's not like they can tease too much at Comic-Con, so at least in regards to Superman. So in regards to all this other stuff, Comic-Con is where they'll definitely talk about it. Um, though there is the little things like CinemaCon and I guess just the general online environment that James Gunn does partake in, but I don't know. We'll have to say, I'd, I'd rather them not try and detail too much, because, you know, sometimes you just trip over stuff and you can sort of negate people from wanting to see things if you go down the wrong road so yeah I i'm looking forward to a lot of the stuff coming but i'm not 
as excited as I was when a lot of it was announced, just because I think the universe is like shaping in a different way than I thought it would. And that's not a bad thing. It's just that now I have to wait and see it. You know, that makes sense. I have to wait and see what they're delivering rather than just going on what I was expecting, because it's obviously a bit different than what I was expecting. So when a Superman trailer drops, I'll look at it and go, okay, now I'm excited for this, but I can't base it off the set photos because set photos don't really tell you a lot if, you know, and I think we've known that from different projects in the past. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on it, show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions and everything we went over in this video. Always curious to hear what you guys are thinking. What are you looking forward to the most in regards to these projects? Let me know. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.